everything. Rolling. All right. Yep. We'll be here. All right. Good, good. Okay. All right, so let's get started, guys. Looks like people are showing up, so thank you for coming. I'm very excited that you're here with us today. Um, today we're talking about masks. So it's something that people have asked us about a few times now that we've been doing the Sew Together Tuesdays um, about how to do these masks, and they've become very popular in the last week or so, um, and lots of people are making them. And so we wanted to sort of talk about why you could make them and how you could make them today. So. Um, the CDC recommends that you use, that medical workers use that N95 mask, which is the one that will prevent any of the virus. Um, but because they are few and far between, started making them for them, making um, cloth masks for themselves and for essential workers. And so we want to talk about the two and how you can make them. There are lots and lots of patterns out there that work for making the kind for hospitals, other essential workers. So I want to really stress that, that it's not just for hospitals, but also for all the essential workers. They really need those masks. And so if you have any and you're willing to donate them, they will always be happy to be taken. Um, but if you don't need them yourself for your work, then we're going to talk about making your own, like basically a facial a face mask that will be a barrier um, that will help limit the transmission of the virus, but isn't the same level. Okay, so that's really important to understand that it's not going to do the same thing as that N95 mask. But what we want to do is create masks that will help lower the spread of the virus. Okay, so um, first I want to recommend that you um, keep tabs on the CDC.gov site. They have lots of good information on there, lots of very accurate scientifically based information, which is um, important to have. Um, there have been a few hospitals who have asked for, and different places who have asked for masks. So if you are making those masks, the first thing I want you to understand is that you need to talk to whoever is asking for them. Sometimes it's a big group. There's, um, there's a new website out called weedingmasks.org, I believe. Um, I'll make sure and check that website. Um, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, weedingmasks.org. And so there are a group of people, I think it's from the Craft Industry Alliance. I'm going to say that and I'm going to get corrected by no one if I'm wrong. Um, but they put together a bunch of resources for making the masks and where they can go. So there are a lot of different groups who are sort of organizing these mask making um, events where you can make a bunch of masks and then have them donate it. Um, so if you're working, that's the best way to go to one of those groups because they're going to have the place to take them and they're going to know what to make. So there are a couple of different ones that are being made a lot for those that are very, very basic. Jenny just did one the other day um, that are just the rectangle of fabric that are pleated, put by binding down the side, and you're done. I will tell you there are a couple of good websites. So the one is, um, is through Providence Hospitals. They have one that they've done, and through Deaconess Hospitals, they've done one as well because they're reaching out to sewers. Um, and another good site to look at is eQuilter.com on her blog. Um, Anna Rubin is uh, who runs that, and she has a whole bunch of information on hers as well about where you can send them. So those two, the Deaconess and Providence Hospitals, both provide patterns that will um, tell you how to make those basic masks that are going to fit over the N95s for the doctor so that they can be replaceable. Okay? So if you're making those, and also if you have any questions, please pop up ask them. My partner Hawk is here. He'll give me the questions and um, we'll answer them as we go. Okay. So those patterns though are really, um, are the ones that are being recommended by the hospital. But check with the one that you're working with to make sure that that one will work for whoever group you're going to work with. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to um, talk about with the mask is I want to make sure that you understand that we want to confirm what, what kind of mask is needed um, and how needed and then make sure that you're doing your best work with these masks because they're going to be washed and dried a million times um, and with bleach and hot water. So that's really important is that we make masks um, that are going to last for a while that will go through the washes. Um, if we're going to invest this time we want to make sure that we're giving we're giving our best work to it. Okay. Make sure that you're using a high thread count quality cotton for those. Um, you want to make sure that you're using basically 
fabric that will um, provide another barrier on top of those masks for you. Okay, um, you're going to use white on the inside. This is what has been recommended: is that you use white on the inside and a print or a solid on the outside. That way, you differentiate between which one is the inside and which one is the outside, and which one is contaminated and which one isn't. Okay. The other thing is to remember that the hospital workers or essential workers that are out there. Um, are going to want a lot of kind of basic ones that they can just keep wearing over and over again. And remember that you should make um, at least some of them that are non-gendered, um, totally just solid colors, um, blue, gray, all of that sort of stuff. But differentiate between inside and outside is that you do that. Um, I want to make sure I get everything for you guys. Choose fabrics that are non-gendered. Make sure that the ties are securely sewn. So when you're doing those, um, the very basic ones that you've seen, it's sort of like this one here. This is basically the idea, okay, is that this one is, this one has the little, um, little pleats here basically to give you um, a nose and a, a chin spot. But these are just the little pleats that are tucked in here. Okay, so when you sew these on here, you want to make sure that this is really strongly sewn. So when I did it, I sewed the pleat first, and then I redid that, that binding right on top of it. Okay, so make sure that this is sewn well. You'd be wise to sew over it twice because these are going to get pulled and tugged a whole lot. Okay, and we'll talk about that when we make the other style that I'm going to make today. Okay, so this is one um, that works well for the N95. So this is um, the, this pattern here. Okay, so this is the AB, AB mask for a nurse by a nurse. You've probably seen this one online, so that's what I made here. Okay, so um, I don't have an N95 mask, so I asked a friend of mine yesterday to come over and see if this works. So I have pictures to show you. I had asked her if she wanted to come over and she could be a part of the video, and then I realized we can't be six feet apart in my studio. So I had her stand outside and we took pictures. <laughs> so this is this is Lauren wearing this mask. So this is with the N95 mask, or the she has the N95 mask underneath it, and then this goes over the top. Okay, so you can see how this works. When we tried it on, so here's another little one um, that's from the side. Okay, so when, we, when I tried it on myself, um, what happens, I try on this style, is that it's um, really big because it's supposed to go over that mask. Okay, so this one doesn't work as well if you are using it just for yourself for uh, protection so that you're not transmitting anything or, you know, receiving so much, but it's not, it's a barrier mask is what I'm doing and not an N95 cover. So this works really well for an N95 cover. So that's the AB mask, also the Deaconess one, the Providence one. That sort of style is really great for this, but I found that for myself, it doesn't work as well um, for a comfortable face mask because it's, it's so large that it comes way up into my eyes and it hangs down here and it was loose. And the point of the mask is to have it so that it fits on your face really nicely so that you're not, when we're talking, that we're not um, sharing any of our, you know, bodily fluids by <laughs> talking too much, coughing, all of that sort of stuff, sneezing, all of it. We want to keep that mask on there to keep our germs inside. Okay, so to do that, we need something that fits really nicely on us. So the one that we're using today is a variation on um, the Foo mask that I found at freesewing.org, and I made a little, um, just a few little changes on it, and then wrote up some instructions on how I put it together. So we'll have that available for download later um, if you want it. Like I said, there are lots and lots of mask patterns out there. Okay, but I want to talk a little bit about the fabric that we're using today. Do we have any questions yet? We're doing okay. No, we're doing all right. Okay, There's good. Some internet problems, but I think it's you know I think it's just a, an overall bandwidth uh, consumption issue. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was um, the fabrics, and so different fabrics that you can use for it. Okay. So a lot of the um, and this has been a constant question is what do I use? What do I use? So I want to tell you that high quality fabric is what you want to use. So you want to use the best that you've got in your, on your on hand. Okay. There are differences in the thread count. And so one of the things that I was really curious is if um, there was a difference between batiks and cotton lawn and quilting cotton. So I did this little experiment, okay? So what I did was I took little pieces of fabric and I took pictures of it, okay? Let me see which ones I've got here. And then I blew them up. So I've got my orange, 
and this is the other little batik, and this is my um, cotton lawn, and then my printer ran out of ink. So I can't print them all. But what I wanted to show you was that if you look at this, these are all exactly one square inch of the fabric blown up, okay? So what I wanted to see was how dense the thread count actually was. So this is just regular quilting cotton. We're working today with um, all the fabric that we're gonna be doing is from Robert Kaufman. Um, as much as we love our gauze, it wasn't appropriate for this task. And this would be why, is because the thread count gets much higher for the batiks. It's because it's been washed and dried so much that it's shrunk and these threads get tighter together. So you can see this is just a quilting cotton and you can totally see through that. This is actually the print on the fabric. You can see that, but you can't see this at all. So this is a nice tight weave and it's been, uh, it's been recommended as well as Jersey knit, which I'll be using, I've used in one of my samples, um, and then cotton lawn, which was just as nice, but then I, my printer ran out of ink, so I couldn't print a picture for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So there's a little bit about um, thread count, which is important because we want to have a tight weave. And as I said, we love our gauze, but you can see just looking at it, it's a nice open weave, which is great for blankets and for clothing and not so much for something that I want to use as a filter for teeny tiny little viruses. So we're not using this today. We're going to use some Robert Kaufman fabric because we love their fabrics. They're great quilting cottons. Um, as a quilter myself, I use their fabrics a lot and I really love them. Okay, do we have questions yet? We're good? good. All right. So let's talk about how we put them on, okay? There's a couple of different methods. When you are sewing them for the um, like hospitals or essential workers, you probably want to use a tie if you can. And the reason for that is because it gives it more flexibility, okay? So it, no matter what size your head, that those straps are going to work because you're just going to tie them on tight enough. The other thing is that they're well, they will wear better. So a lot of elastic has latex in it. So if you're sure that your elastic doesn't have any latex, you can use that. Um, it has a little bit less um, flexibility, I guess, in how um, what the size is. But there's still some, obviously, because it will stretch. So that's great. Um, but make sure that it doesn't have any latex. And the other reason that elastic isn't always recommended is because these masks have to be washed in very hot water and with bleach, it'll break down the elastic over time. Um, and that's going to be pretty quick in this situation. So um, a lot of places are recommending ties. I know I've seen a few people who have made them and then had they weren't able to get um, taken at the hospital because they had elastic and not the tie. So make sure, like I said, that you're checking with the hospital or a place that you're trying to give them to make sure that you're giving them exactly what they want. Um, I have all sorts of threads on here because I didn't do a very good job trimming them, but these all have ties. Okay, my first sample, this is one that um, I made for a hawk recently because we were trying to figure out how to make these. And so I used this elast uh, clear elastic that I had. Okay, and I bought this a while ago and I thought, oh, that'll work. Um, but what did we find out, hawk? It breaks, <laughs> it breaks. It breaks really fast. It doesn't wear very well at all. So as much as we um, really thought it would be nice to have the clear elastic and you wouldn't see it and it would fit really nicely, it didn't really work very well. So I'm not recommending this, okay? Because this is the um, the one that I have fixed twice. I can't. Yeah, twice and now it's broken again. So don't recommend clear elastic, okay? So the next one that I made for us. Um, for each of us, I'm making them with the um, fold over elastic. Okay, so for personal use, I found that I like this one the best. The, um, I don't even have any of the little elastic right here. Hold on half a second. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, see, I don't even have any little stuff. So I don't have any of the tiny quarter inch elastic or the eighth inch that people have been using, but this sort of elastic, okay, the, um, that people have been using, the smaller ones, obviously, um, these are just, they're wider and sort of obnoxious and they're not very cute. So um, I wanted to use something that was a little bit nicer. Plus, like I said, I didn't have quarter inch. I just have larger ones. Um, so I use the fold over elastic and this one I got from by Annie that's used in some of her, one of her patterns that I bought it for and then haven't made. Um, and so I stole this and used it. And this is actually super nice. So um, 
I haven't tested it through washes yet, but it feels nice, it's stretched well, and I think this is gonna work out really well. So this would be um, one that is still available in some places is this fold-over elastic. Um, and I really liked it, it was very comfortable, right? That's correct. Yeah, very yes. comfortable. So for me, part of this is making masks that um, I'm gonna wanna wear, because that's the point. So if you're making them for the hospital workers, it's one thing, and if you're making it for yourself, it's gonna be something different, because you're gonna wanna wear this thing whenever you're in public or around other people. And I know that they were suggesting that if someone in your home gets ill, that everybody needs to protect themselves from that as well. So it might be something that you're wearing quite a lot. So I wanted to make it comfortable. So this would be, um, this is my recommendation for that, if you're not using um, the ties and the ties there's a couple of ways of making them so on the bumblebee one okay on this one um, I did this and I folded it's got cuddle dust all over it I folded these over the edge and then just stitched them down okay what I did was I used this little guy and you may have purchased this at some point okay it's a little clover tool yep clover it's the 18 size is what this is and I cut a strip that was one and three eighths and then basically you just feed it through here so in the back oh I do have a strip let me show you guys so basically how this works is you feed this guy through here okay you're gonna get that in Let's see if I can get it started there we go and then I always need to grab it with something so I'm gonna use my little porcupine quill here okay and I can get this fed in there maybe I'm doing it wrong-handed okay let me twist it okay you got it in there Hawk okay so what I do is I get this stuck in the back side of it if I can there we go come on it was so much easier yesterday when I did this there we go Okay, so now it gets in there. Then I can start to pull it through, okay? Then I can grab it here. So what happens is you're gonna use this with your iron, okay? I'm gonna get this nice and neat, okay? So then what happens is you're gonna pull this, so you just have to get it even. Then you're gonna take it over here to your iron, okay? And I've got my little, my little travel guy here, okay? So what I do is I just press it as it pulls out. So See if I can move this, okay? So if you haven't used one of these and you've got one, because a lot of times, you know, we buy tools and then they sit there. That's how this works, okay? So then it's gonna be like this. Then I can turn this after it comes all the way through. So one of the things is I like to use my clapper for this and put it on here and get it nice and stable, okay? And then I'm gonna come back with my iron and just press this. And then I've made my own bias tape, okay, which is gonna be stronger than the stuff you've gotten um, prepackaged, okay? So now you can use this as your bias tape. But we didn't do it on the bias, so yes. So it's, <laughs> it's double fold tape, but it's not bias tape. It's actually straight of grain, okay? And the reason is because it doesn't need to have stretch. It's not anything it doesn't need to go around a curve which would be why we would use a bias um, it just needs to be straight so that's how that's going to be okay so this tool works really well for making your own bias tape and um, <laughs> there's the door um, and so then this is another little tool that you can use with it this is act actually off of my and you feed the bias tape in here and it will come through. I don't have one for my baby lock, but I know they make them for lots of machines. So um, you can get them for your serger and all sorts of um, other machines, Bernina makes them and that sort of thing. So if you're gonna do the bias tape um, method or the strip doing that, do it with these. If you're gonna do the straps, this is a really easy way of doing it. Otherwise, you're just gonna feed it through your machine just one bit at a time, okay? But the straps work really well, so that's how we're gonna do it. Okay, questions yet? No? All right. <laughs> okay, if you have any, please do pop up. So otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking at you. Okay, so we talked about the fabric. We talked about the elastic. All right, oh, so the thing that's different about this too. So basically, these are all the same method that I used. This is um, Carolyn Friedlander's architectures, which I really, really love. Um, and this one, you can see I did the white on the inside, and I did her architectures on the outside, and I did black straps. Okay, the other thing I did with this is I made a little channel and I did it with cuddle because I've got a lot of cuddle. Um, but I made a little channel and I stuck some wire in here. Okay, so this wire is actually picture hanging wire that we had. 
um, that I used that to see how it would work. The first few I did, I did three inches. The last one I did, I did four inches. Okay, and I don't know if you can see, eh, you can, you can see like how much bigger that is. This actually fit much, much better, okay? So this one was a four inch strip and fit across my nose and um, down my cheeks just a little bit. So make sure that you're using some sort of a wire in there, because if you're using that, um, and we tried a couple of different things. I used bread ties and that actually worked okay too, because they're um, like moldable. Anything where you can actually move the wire, mold it into the position that you want, that's what you want to use, okay? So see what you've got around the house. You can have, maybe have some floral wire, that sort of thing. Um, so that's what we did on these. So four inches is what I rec recommend for that one, okay? This one you can see I did it with the knit fabric. So this one I tried with knit on the inside. So this is Laguna Jersey is what this is. Um, and this was really comfortable. So that's why I wanted to try it because I thought if I'm wearing it myself a lot, I want it to be soft on my face. And I feel like this will be comfortable. I wore it around for a little while this morning and I think it's, I think it's gonna be good. So I'll have to give that one a shot the next time I have to go grocery shopping. Okay, so this one is um, with the, the strip with the jersey in it. This one I did with the cotton on the inside. I made a few of them to get me started where I did the lining. So this is just cotton. This is just Kona cotton, white, white, white. And then I used um, interfacing in here. So this is an sew, a sew-in interfacing, okay? So this is from Pellon. I think it's 30, I think was what the number was. And I had read that a non-woven was really good for um, a filter, which makes a lot of sense to me. And I didn't have vacuum cleaner bags to cut up because I've heard you could do that too. Um, but I did have the fusible or the non-fusible interfacing. So I used that in there. And then I just adhered them together, sewed it, clip my curves and stitch them so that these are ready to go, all right? So on all of mine, I've used three layers, and I think that that's um, probably better, this seems like it's better than two layers. Um, it's one other layer. So I tried to do a different substrate. Each time when I did a third layer, I did a different substrate for it. So the other one that I found was really good was cotton lawn because it's a really tight weave. Um, so I used the Cambridge cotton that Kaufman has. It's a really tight weave, but it's still very thin. So it's it's breathable, but I feel like it's a, it's a, um, a tighter weave. So I used that one. Okay, so those two examples. And then this one was a fun one that I did. And I did this one um, out of Violet Crafts, Modern Classics, this new um, collection that she has. And this was the roll up. So basically, I just wanted to make one that was like, you know, quilter friendly if I have to wear them. Um, I really want to make sure that I'm happy wearing it. So this one I did, and I just put it together, sort of quilt as you go. So what I did is I cut out my pattern, and I cut it out of the interfacing, and then I just sewed these bits on, and then trimmed it up and sewed it, okay? So you can do all sorts of fun things, whatever you want to do with your, with your mask. When you're wearing them for yourselves, you want to have a few of them, and you want to have it so that you actually, you know, like wearing it. All right, so are you guys ready to sew? Let's do that. I think we, uh, I think I covered the information. Let me check really quick. Okay. All right. So I think I got everything that I wanted. So now I'll show you how I put this guy together. Okay. And like I said, this is a really good one for personal use. Okay. This is for you to use so that um, you have a barrier. All right. So I've got the pattern. Okay, and I have this cut out um, out of the interfacing. I'm just using it as a pattern right now though. Okay, and I've got some fabric. So this is just a quilting cotton that I had. I'm gonna move some more stuff out of my way. So this is a quilting cotton that I got <laughs> last year at a fat quarter bundle. Okay, this is some uh, of the Cambridge cotton. I'm gonna give that a little press. Okay, this is the, um, the cotton lawn, which is really nice and soft, but also um, has a really tight weave. And I use this a lot for bindings is what I use it for generally, okay. All right, and then here's just some Kona and I've got a huge hunk of it. Let me see if I can tear off a piece. The scissors are just that far away, all right. Okay. Now, I'm gonna fold this and put my layers together. Okay, so I'll tell you guys, I have a little secret underneath this board. 
Okay, and it's my, um, it's called DIY Style. I'm going to slide this back just so you could see it. Okay, it's a whiteboard. So I have my blue board over the top because the white doesn't do very well on video, but I really like the board. So um, it actually has like a little bit of metal underneath it. So it has magnets, which makes cutting out really easy. So I'm using that today just so I can be much faster. Okay, so I've got my pattern. I'm gonna have this part here is um, along the grain. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna catch all of my layers. Okay, I'm gonna put this right on there. Okay, hold that all down in place and then I'm just gonna cut it out. So I'm cutting out all of my layers at one time so that they'll all be exactly the same, um, but you're welcome to you know, cut them out obviously one layer at a time. If you're doing a bunch of mask making, this is a great way to, great way to do it too. Move my, my magnet. Okay, come around there. And one more. I'm gonna take my time with this one because it's, it's curvy. Okay, and of course you could do this with scissors, but I find doing it with my rotary is just faster. Okay. All right, so there we go. We'll get rid of my scraps. Okay, and now I've got my pieces. So here is my outside layer, my middle layer, my inside, my lining fabric, okay, and my pattern. I'm just gonna put my pattern away. Oh, <laughs> we need to make ties. So let me see if I can get my inch and three quarter, or three eighths out of here. Give me that little one right there. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna need a few of these. Let's see what I can get. My brain is ticking, trying to figure out how do I best get since I just used my scraps. Okay. Can I do it this way and refold it? Okay, and get some one and three eighth bits out of here. So that's what we're gonna use for the straps. That's what I used for all of them. It seemed to work pretty well. I like it because it gives you a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, um, like an inch would only be a quarter inch strap and that just wasn't big enough. And those are, whoopsie, so a little bit longer than I need, and I'm gonna need two other ones. So I'm actually gonna cut those out of my Kona, okay, so that I've got enough. So let me see if I can find my selvage edge. So one of the things that I did when I did this that I think was kind of tricky and mostly just a cheat was that I cut it so that the selvage end is just left raw. So when I go to um, put the ends on it, look here, I'll show you some. Here's one. So you'll see I just left the selvage right on there. Also have some fuzz for you. All right, so you can see I just left it. All right, and that way I don't have to finish it and that selvage is never gonna do anything because it's selvage, so it's not gonna fray like some of the other will. Okay, so I'm just gonna tear this so I can get it on the grain. And then I'm gonna cut a couple little strips, all right? Again, I like to use the cotton for the strip, or yeah, for the strips here um, to make the straps because it is a, um, just a stronger fabric. Okay, so like the, the lawn is really nice, but it's really thin. The knit is just stretchy. Okay, so we're gonna cut these. The way that I cut them before, um, when I did them, was that I cut them in two different lengths. Um, so I cut them at 
uh, 18 inches and 14 inches. You can just take yours if you want to do it with the fabric. If you've got that, you can just cut it with the fabric and, um, and then cut it in half. But I liked having them two different lengths because when we, uh, so we did a little thing where we measured how long our elastic straps would need to be. And they were very different between the top of your head and the bottom. So um, I thought it would work pretty well to do it the, uh, the same way with these. Okay, so then I'm just gonna cut this guy in half. And then I have two 14 inch strips. Okay, so now I've got two 14 inch strips. I am gonna cut these. Make sure that's even, yep. I'm gonna cut these at 18 inches. Okay. And then these will be my top straps and those will be my bottom straps. All right, so here's my straps. Get these out of the way again. All right, and then I've got all of my pieces ready to sew. All right, so what I like to do is to put um, two of the pieces together and sort of make them work um, uh, together as, as layers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these all together so they become layers. We want to do it right sides together. The only one that matters is this one. The other uh, two fabrics are the same on either side. Okay, so if you need to pin this, you can go ahead and do that. I found that with a quick little press, it'll sort of stick together. I can iron it and we can go. All right, we iron these guys together and then we'll just sew all three of these at one time. You can do this on your serger too. Um, just put it at a little bit wider seam so it'll grab all the layers and uh, you're good to go. All right, okay, do you wanna come on over here and we'll, we'll sew from this side. So he's gonna come around. I put, um, I put a brighter thread in here today so you could see what I was sewing just a little bit better. Um, but that's, so that's why it is. Normally I would just use a, a matching color. Okay, so I've got the walking foot on here because I like it. I'm using a straight stitch at a two millimeter stitch length just because I want this to wear really well. I want it to be strong, so I've chosen to do a smaller stitch length. Okay, I'm gonna lock my stitch. Okay, and then I'm just gonna sew all the way around this following the curve. And I sort of keep an eye on this part here because this is my quarter inch. So I want it to match my, my fabric edge to go right along there rather than back here where it says a quarter of an inch right now. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a little lock, cut my thread, and then I'll do the next layer. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Lift that up, take that out, put it in and sew around this curve as well. Okay. There we go. Oh, did I lose my thread? Hold on, I did. Something happened. I just had too much, too much green happen in there. Okay. Oh no. Well, like she has to thread the machine again. We're in trouble. <laughs> So let's try that again. We'll hold that thread, make sure we don't lose it. So if you have a hard time getting those little corners to come in, make sure you're grabbing your thread tails as you go. It'll help a lot to get it to feed through nicely. Okay. And then I just try to, try to follow that curve as well as I can. We'll cut that one and then we'll do one more. And this is the cotton lawn. Okay. Lock stitch and then we'll go. All right. Okay, so you can actually sew um, this layer to the back of one of the other ones or you can sew them separately. Um, I'll show you in just a second. So now I've got all three of my layers. All right, do you want to just come over here? 
and we will do this. Okay, so now I've got my layer. So what I was saying is that you can actually sew your um, your front or your lining fabric to the um, the cotton lawn or whatever you're using for your middle layer, just like I did here, where I sewed these actually as one piece, and then I have the two layers that work together as one. Okay, so you can do that. We just did them individually this time. All right, so then I've got my handy dandy pinking shears and I'm gonna use these to clip my curves instead of clipping little triangles. So this will just clip a whole bunch of triangles for me to get it to lay nicely. You can totally clip curves um, as well, but if you've got pinky shears, it's a great time to use them. Okay, and that'll help that curve to lay out nicely as it goes around. So this is where it gets a little bit funky to press it too. So I found that if you sort of finger press it a little bit first, it's helpful. Okay, also if you have a ham, this is a good time to use it too. Okay. Pinking shears are one of those things that I've had for a million years and I use like three times a year, but when I need them, they come in so handy. Okay. So now we've got all of our curves done. So you can totally press these open or press them to the side, okay? If you wanna press them open, you totally can. I find that pressing to the side works absolutely fine. And then we're just gonna nest those corners or nest those seams in there, okay? So I'm just getting here, just press it all to the side one way. All right, get that nice and neat. Okay, if you have a ham, you can put it over the top of the ham and press it that way as well. All right, do the same thing. Okay, and this one, I wanna make sure that it's gonna nest. So if I put these together, they're gonna go this way. So I'm gonna want, my seam is going this way here, I'm gonna want it to go that way here. Okay. Get those two together. Okay, so I've got seams going one way and then the other. All right, and I'm just gonna nest those together just like we would for any quilting project. Okay, I'm just gonna pin those. I'm gonna pin this over here. Okay, because these now will start to work as one piece. All right, so you can lay this either direction. You can lay it, um, you could actually lay it the other way so that it was, they were right side, right side, right side, and that would work just as well too. Okay, because this is just a middle layer, so it actually doesn't matter which way our seam is facing. It does want to nest whichever way it's going though. Okay, so now I've got that. I'm gonna pin this one, or press this one, and then we'll pin those all together. Okay. And I'm gonna check this. Is this went that way. Yep, that's the way I want it to go. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a good press. If you want to, you could also come along here and do a little top stitching. So on these, you can see that's what I did, is I um, did the pinking shears, and then I pressed it open, and then I top stitched each, each side of it. Okay, which gives it a nice finished look. So that's the inside of the mask. And I just thought it looked nicer, but you don't have to, all right? So you can leave it totally like this. All right, so now we're gonna put these all together. So this is my right side of my mask. This is the outside. Okay, so I want to put the outside and the inside layer together, right sides together, all right? And I'm gonna pin these together up here through all those layers, trying to get them to go this way and that way so they nest up there and aren't too thick. We're gonna come back and trim that later because it does become pretty, um, just a lot, of, a lot of fabric up there. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this a little bit. We're still doing okay out there, Hawk? We're doing okay. great. Everybody's excited to get to use their pinky shears. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we buy them and then they sit there. This is a great way to do it. And it's so much faster than trying to do the little clip, clip, clips. And I feel like it's um, just as effective, if not more. It makes it um, just curve right up there along there. All right. So now I've got some pins in here. Okay. So I've got it. Reiterate here. I've got right sides together. So this is my inside my outside, and that's just my middle layer, 
okay? So that needs to go on the wrong side of one of the fabrics here, but when these are right sides together, all right? So let's go sew these together. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the quarter inch, quarter inch seam, okay? Let's get that sewing. Take these pins out along the way. Make sure you're not sewing over your pins. All right, so where it comes up here to kind of a point, I'm actually gonna round it as we come around here because I don't really want the point, but I do want that seam to go over. So I'm gonna tick that up, push it down. Wish I had more fingers or hands. Okay, there we go. We're just gonna come around there. All right, and that gives it a little curve and not so much of a point at my nose. Okay, do a little back stitch and then clip my threads. All right, so now we're gonna take this out. We're gonna come back over here. Okay, you could do the same thing and clip this because this is gonna have some curve to it. Okay, get through that little thick part, come back along. So what I'm really doing is just clipping the part that has the curve to it, because the other part is straight enough that it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm gonna come and do the same thing. And I'm gonna press up. Okay. So I'm gonna show you a little trick in here that you do not have to do, but I find that when I do this, it lays a lot nicer. It's something that we do in apparel making called understitching. Okay, and I did it with all of mine and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so we're gonna come back over here and I'm going to change out my foot to this guy. Okay, so this is the one that has the little bar down the middle. Okay, so it's a little guide, a stitch in the ditch foot is what it's generally called. Okay, because this little guide will help me figure out where I'm going. So I'm gonna move my needle over, move it over to the right, 1.5 millimeter. And I think that'll be okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna stick this in here, okay? And what this is gonna do, and I can test it by coming down here, so I'm like, ah, maybe I'll move it over just a little bit more. Okay, and after I do a little stitch, it's gonna show up. There we go. So now it's over just a tiny bit more, and I kinda like that better. So I'm just gonna back stitch just a couple stitches, and then I'm gonna go. Okay, so what I'm doing here with this under stitching is that I'm pressing all of this seam toward the, um, toward the lining and it's just gonna hold over there better. So this is where you gotta be a little bit funky because you've got this curve, okay? So what I found is if I just hold it out as I'm coming in here, it'll work okay. Okay, so you can see I'm just kinda spreading this seam so I can see where I'm going. Okay, I have found that at this point it likes to get caught up under my walking foot sometimes, so I have to kind of shift it out. Okay. Keep it nice and nice and flat, and that way it'll sew better. Okay, so I'm just keeping that seam open. Come right over here, I'm gonna back stitch and take it out. Okay, so what that does is it gives me a little top stitching sort of on the inside, but what it really, what it's really effective for is making that inside stay to the inside so that when I'm wearing this, it's not gonna roll up this way, okay? Cause that just holds it down to the back. You see that? Okay, so that's really good. That's called under stitching. So if you ever see that and you didn't know what it was, that's what we're talking about. So I'm gonna press that real quick. And so what I can do is I can lay it on here and then sort of force it back as much as it wants to go. And that's where it'll be and just be nice. Okay. And I'm going to turn this and get the other. So you'll notice with the curves, you can't really do straight presses very well. You've got to kind of, you know, make it work for you. You can't do it straight across all at one time. It doesn't really work. All right. So now I've got that all pressed. You can see it wants to curve right to the inside. It's a nice, nice little... Nice little touch, okay? So if you're making these mass production, don't worry about that stuff. Um, this is really just for making it nicer for you. 
which is also important. Okay, so now we're gonna make our little ties. All right, so I've got all the ties here. So I'm just gonna put this aside for a second and I'm gonna make my ties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew all of these and I should, do I have, oh, I don't have selvage on this one, um, but I do on these. So I'm just gonna leave them um, just the way that I did my other ones. And I'm gonna show you because if you want to, what you can do is when we stitch this, you can stitch off the end and make a nice corner, um, but you can also just leave them. So maybe I'll do it both ways and you can see. Okay, I just like to do things so it's a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this over to the machine and we're gonna sew all of these little strips. Okay, so I'm gonna fold these. I'm not gonna pin them. Oh, I gotta change out my foot. What happened to the other one? There it is. Okay, all right, so now I need to put my needle back into the center position. Okay, oops. Okay, still got my, just on a straight stitch, and I'm gonna fold this in half, right sides together. Okay, one of the things that I have found is that if I look at this and I say, okay, so this is where my quarter inch is. Okay. What I really want to look at now is to make sure that that line is being followed here so that this width is the same, okay? So it's a little bit funky way of doing it. So you can look at your quarter inch or you can look at this side. I found that especially when I'm doing small pieces, if I look at this side and keep that even, it works a little better for me, okay? All right, and we're gonna try to get this going. Make it nice and slow. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep this folded in half. So if you wanna pin it, you totally can. What I like to do is just fold it in half as I go and sort of keep an eye on it. Okay, so I'd rather spend my time, I guess, sewing than pinning. Which is funny because when I work with cuddle, I always tell people, pin, 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 pin. But when I'm working with cotton, not as much. Okay, and these straps, if they vary a little, it's okay. Okay, this is also something you can do on your serger, is just sew these little straps. If you've got those, super fast. Just make sure that they are um, sewn with a little bit shorter stitch length than you might do otherwise, just so that they hold really well. Okay. Y'all get to see my natural nails today because we didn't have time to do nails. We just wanted to get this out for you. All right, so I'm gonna sew all the way to the end, do a little back stitch. Okay, clip my thread. I'm gonna do this three more times. Okay, there we go. Do we have any questions out there? Nothing? Everybody's happy? Everybody's like in the understitching. Okay, good. <laughs> good, it really helps a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So this one I can see it's a little bit, it was a little bit short here. So if you look really carefully here, you can see where my red line is. I'm gonna use my pin to point, okay? So my red line here is actually a little bit further over here because I didn't quite cut that um, edge perfectly, but I can still get my width right because I'm measuring from that side, okay? So I'm gonna get in there, lock my stitch again, and I'm gonna sew. Okay, so that's when you can hold your thread if it starts to wiggle a little bit at the beginning. Just hold your thread as it's coming through back here. It's a little bit harder with the, um, the digital dual feed because it's, it's got a lot of bulk back there. But you do not need to use a digital dual feed, just so you know. This project is totally doable. It's just your regular foot. I'm just so used to sewing with it all the time. Okay, camera needs to come back just a little. Okay. Keep on trucking. You can see I just sew a little bit, stop, reposition it. If you want to pin it all first, you go right ahead. Okay, not stopping you. It's really all about what you want. Okay. So I'm going to stitch forward, do a little lock stitch, flip it. Okay, halfway there. Okay, now I'm going to do my little shorty one. So you remember I did two size. Um, two sizes of straps. So I want different lengths 
That's the way I'm doing it for my head and for my neck. So those are different sizes for me. You are welcome to do them both the same. This is just how I'm doing it. Okay, the pattern that we're doing for you, it'll list all that information out for you. Um, and then you will have that later. Okay, so we have, um, we do have a blog post that'll share a bunch of information, a bunch of resources. So those websites that I was telling you about earlier with the other patterns and more information about where people are needing you to make masks and how to make your own um, comfortable face mask that you can wear yourself. So all of that information is out on the blog. And if it's not there now, it will be there soon, okay? back stitch here clip it one more time and I've just got one more little guy to make all right fold it in half all right I put it under there far enough that I'm gonna stitch into the fabric first Okay, so one of the things that happens a lot in class that people um, have a hard time with is if you start sewing before the fabric gets there, a lot of times it'll really want to eat your fabric. So when you're doing that, make sure you're getting your, get your fabric completely under the, under the needle before you start sewing. Okay, and I'm just running this right along that edge. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm making sure that my, ed my raw edges are basically the same and that this guy is running right along that third line on the left side of my foot. Okay. And what I found is that I can get um, a more even strap or a tiny little piece if I watch that side rather than the other. Okay, so now I've got all the pieces sewn. Oops. All right, so now I've got this strap sewn. So I've got this little tool that I have had for a million years. I don't know if anybody else has one of these. It got, it got fixed recently because it had gotten bent. Um, this is from Fast Turn. There are, other, um, there are other tube turners, so use what you have. But this is the one that I've got. So basically, the way that it works is it's got this little tube. And I'm going to feed this in here. It's going to take me a second because it always does. Okay. There we go. I just have to sort of have to work with it for just a second. Okay, then once it gets in there, I can feed it up here. Oh, it got real tight there. Looks like I wasn't doing a very good job of watching my seam, maybe. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stick this up here and I'm gonna come up and grab it. Okay, I'm gonna twirl that little corkscrew through and then I'm gonna drag it down into it. Okay, let's see if I can move this. It's always funny to me how things work so differently when we're doing it on, oh no, it did it. It untwisted, I hate it when that happens, okay. So it does do that sometimes in real life where it'll pop off of there. So let me show you what I do to make it work. Okay, if I can get this to come up there. So what I'll do is now I'm gonna stick it through this side too. Okay, and see if I can get it to not pop out again. Okay. It's so tight. It's so Yesterday I did this like what, six times? totally works every time. Now I'm like, oh, maybe not. Okay, let's see if we can get that to come through. Oh my goodness. I have to try this with another one we are. If I have to do my straps over, ladies, that's what we're doing. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. All right, there we go. If I ease this up, it'll, it'll come through a little bit easier. Okay. It just turns it. So they have, um, the company that makes this, I think they're in Southern Oregon, but they have all sorts of different sizes, which I really do like. Do, do, do. Come on. Let's get this one tiny. 
We need like four more hands, I swear. Okay, we're just gonna try to pull. There we go. It worked. Okay. So now we'll get this guy out. Yay! It did work. It did, I swear. Okay, now I have to get this guy out of there. So this is where I do a little fidgeting and try to pull things around and blah, blah, blah. Okay. You just have to wiggle this little guy out of there. If I can manage to do it. It's all tucked in there so nicely. It doesn't want to unloosen for me. <laughs> I've had this tool forever, and today it's not working right. Okay, so then I'm going to get my little, I'm going to use my little um, porcupine thing and see if I can get this end to come out. Okay, it was because I had to double, double back on it. Okay, so if you want, you could totally be lazy and leave that in there and it will be an end for you. The other thing you can do is leave these raw. So if you don't have selvages to use, you can leave them raw and then just knot them. And that works too. Okay, I'm just going to leave the selvages because that's, that's just my MO. Okay. People are going to tell me about their better turning techniques. And I really want to hear them, ladies. I want to hear them. They've been working well for me till today, and now I'm, you know, have to do it live for you. And I'm like, wait, I can't do it. Help me. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can get another one to work. Does anybody have any tools they're telling me about yet? No. Oh. That one was a little bit better. Goodness. So crazy. It's like, it's like, no, I'm not going any further. That's where I'm stuck. All right, let's see if it'll work. And if not, you know what? We just might make new tires. Just about there. Just about there. I can feel it. Oh, there we go. Yay. It's probably more exciting for me than it is for you guys. But wow, that was, that one worked. It's great. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to pull that up just a little bit, and then I'm going to leave it because it doesn't matter. Okay, and I'll go back and fix that later when you guys don't have to watch me. All right, so I'm going to stick these guys. Oh, I have to do these two as well. Let's see if I can make them work any better. Oh, yeah. See? So weird. So what I have found is that if I, um, this is what I was doing when I was doing these the other day um, and making them for us, then I realized that um, if I did the little straps at a time, it was, it, it was easier than trying to do the whole width of the fabric. So that's what I originally was doing was I cut the whole width of fabric and then sewed the strap and then tried to turn it. And um, I found that that was so much I couldn't, I could barely get it all onto the tube here. So that's why I cut my strips um, shorter first. So if you have um, a way that works and you can put your whole thing on there at once and then you cut the strip lengths, you can totally do that. I just found that for me, it didn't quite get on there as well as I wanted it to. And then I was fighting it more than this. So it's this little push-pull game that we play. The 
worst is when that thing comes off and it's right near the end, but not close enough to the end for me to actually grab it. That's super frustrating. All right, so there we go. So that one wasn't too terrible. Okay. So there I've got my selvage end. I'm just gonna pull that out, and pull this out the rest of the way, okay. All right, so there's another strap. One more. Can she do it? Okay, so if you wanted to, like I said, you could totally sew the end of these. I didn't do it on any of them. I was planning on it and I forgot. Um, but you could sew across the end here and then flip it. I found that if you do that sew across the end, make sure that you clip your corners because it will um, be a little bit um, obnoxious to try to turn it through. It doesn't really want to do that if you haven't clipped your corners yet. Okay, let's see. Get that little kicky tail in there. Get it to suck down in. There we go. See? That's what I tell my students. By the fourth one, you'll have it down. <laughs> this one totally worked. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit of a battle. We'll get it. Okay, so now I've got all of my strips done. All right, let's see if I can pop this guy out. Okay, and then I'm going to take it back to my little ironing board here. Okay, all right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to iron these. I'm going to iron them flat. So what I do is I try to just keep the the seam on one side. If it's easier for you to iron that seam out flat, you go right ahead. I just iron it so that the seam is along one side. Okay. So I'm just gonna iron that out nice and flat. Okay. Okay, so one down. I'm just going to iron all four of these. And like I said, I was leaving the ends with the selvage. You could tie them. You could make them nicer. You can also just use ribbon for this if you're doing it for yourself. If you're doing it for hospitals, you're making these strips or you're making the, um, the fold-over ones, please use a nice quality fabric. Don't just use the ribbons. Use the best that you can use because the, um, the strength is really needed for these. They're going to go through a lot of wear and tear for essential workers and they're gonna want the best that they can get. Okay, they're gonna get washed and dried and bleached and all sorts of stuff. So we're trying to make the best that we can. Okay, oh, that's my one that has the, the weird little end. Oops, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, this is just for me, it's fine. All right, press that. Okay, just get that nice and flat. All right, if you want it to be um, you know, extra special, you could go and you could top stitch all of these. I just don't find that it's really necessary at all. Okay, so now once I've got these pressed, I need to put them together. So the trick with this is remembering that the shorter ones go on the bottom and the longer ones go on the top. So I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna see, yep, my selvages are both on this end. So these are the raw ends that I wanna sew in, okay? So I'm gonna put them right up here right next to that corner. Okay, and I'm just gonna pin them in place right here. Okay, and then the same thing on this side. Let me see if I did it, I did it the way that I don't want to. So usually I try to put the seam at the bottom and the fold up at the top. Okay, so there's my seam. And that's what I wanna do. Then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do the same thing. That's my selvage end. This is my raw end. So I'm going to put my seam toward the bottom and knock that fold right up to the top. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to pin that in place. Okay. So it comes right off there. So now I need to turn this over and I need to fold it over. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this whole thing over. When I do this, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to pin it again. 
and then I'll take that first pin out. But I always want to repin it before, or yeah, repin it before I take that first pin out. Like don't use the same pin to repin. Okay, so my lower one is going to be the white, and I need it to be about a quarter of an inch from the top. That's my funky end, I'm just gonna use this. All right, so I'm gonna put that the same way. Okay, just checking my seam, where my seam was. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin this. I'm gonna do that same thing where I'm gonna pin it in place and then take my pin out. And then I'm gonna add a couple, just a couple little pins in here on the side. You don't have to pin too much, but what I have noticed when I've sewn a few of them now is that this likes to shift one way or the other and not um, do it the way that I want it to. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, and you could actually, so you could do this in a different order. You can totally take this and I can pin this on here. I just wanna make sure I get the backing too. I have to check the other side, make sure I got that. Well, okay, so I've got a little red thread there that's giving me some hassle. Hold on. There we go. All right, so now I've got that pinned in place and I'm gonna bring this over and do the same thing, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring this all the way over, get that nice and flat in there at the corner, okay? Pin it again and then take that pin out. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Get all my edges lined up, put a pin in it. Take that pin out and then pin a couple more times in the middle. Okay, so now I've got the sides pinned, so I'm gonna go sew these, all right? So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna sew it a quarter of an inch down the side. So I'm gonna put my needle in and then I'll take my pin out. Okay, because I don't wanna sew over it. And I'm gonna back stitch this, then I'm gonna go forward. And then I'm actually gonna back stitch it again because that's where my strap is and I want that to be nice and strong. Okay, so if I do a double stitch over that strap and then I'm actually gonna do a top stitch later, it'll be stitched three times, so it's probably not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so do a little top stitch, or a back stitch there, and I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna start at the top. So I've pinned from this side, um, so it seems like it's backward and I should start down here, but I really want that fold to match. So I'm gonna start up there at the fold. Put my needle down, take my pin out, and do that same stitching, and then I'm gonna back stitch. I'm gonna go over it again. Okay, come all the way down here. And do the same thing on that strap. Okay, all right. So now, we can come over here and I can turn it. I'm not gonna turn it completely, I just wanna show you how it's gonna work now. Okay, so now as I pop those out, I've got the nice side straps, okay? So I can pull that real good, make sure that's nice, make sure I didn't catch anything. Then we're gonna sew our bottom closed except for a little place to turn it, okay? So this is where we're gonna pin across here, but we're gonna leave a little gap. So I found that about a two inch gap or so is totally fine. Um, and I'll show you how I do it. I have a little trick for those uh, corners too. that You might've seen if you've done any of my classes. Okay, so I'm making sure that that center, those center seams all match up. There's a bunch of them right there. I'm trying to make sure that they match. That center seam is close to the other one, okay? and then I'm gonna pin over here. Now I need to pick a place to, um, to leave a gap so that I can turn it, right? But what I don't wanna do is leave it on the middle of this seam. So I, I close that up and I'm gonna stitch over it and I'm gonna leave a gap over here and I'm gonna turn it through this side, okay? We don't wanna put a stress point on that seam in the middle, so we wanna sew that nice and shut. All right, what I do for my own self to remember where to turn things is I will put double pins. Okay, 
So we're gonna do this here and put these right next to each other. So for me, this is my start stop. So I'm gonna start sewing here, come all the way here, end, and then I'll sew that little bit and then we'll, we'll turn it inside out, okay? All right, so let's do that. My pins are going a little crazy there. All right, so I'm gonna get that in there and I'm gonna start sewing. Okay, and I'm just doing a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across. Okay, now one of the little things that I found in sewing is that if I make little L's here, it's gonna work much nicer to turn it. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, I'll show you. I'm just gonna back stitch two stitches, two. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn this so off the edge. And I'm gonna back stitch a little bit just to give that some security and cut my thread. Okay, now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, I'm gonna put my foot down. I'm gonna take my pins out because there's too many and they are in the way. All right, I'm gonna jimmy this just a little so that I can see if I've got it closer to a quarter of an inch, all right? So then I'm gonna back stitch. Okay, lift my foot, put my foot down. Okay, I'm gonna move this just the tiniest little bit so I can get back to where I stopped stitching. Okay, put my needle down, make sure that worked, yep. All right, and now I'm gonna sew right off the end there. All right, so now I've got that all done. So I'm gonna clip these corners actually, just so that they're a little bit less bulky. And I'm just gonna take that off right there. Okay, all right, and then we're gonna turn it. So this part, you wanna make sure that you're grabbing the parts that you wanna turn. So if you turn this inside out and it looks funky, make sure that you haven't turned the lining and the outside fabric, okay? You should be turning the outside and the, um, the lining fabric here, not the, the middle fabric, okay? Okay, I'm just gonna turn this right through that little hole. All right. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our mask turned inside out. All right, so it's looking much more like a mask. I've got my little ties here. I can yank those out, make sure they're in the right place. Okay, give those a good little tug, pull those corners out with it. Okay, this one wants to stick in there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here and kind of push it out just a little. Okay, get that corner knocked out just a little bit better. All right, and so you'll notice that where I did those little L's, it makes the fabric just turn right in where it's supposed to be. Okay, and I don't have to go press it. I can totally just finger press that and it's in the right place now, um, which is kind of a little, uh, it's a great little trick for all sorts of things. I'm just gonna pin that because right there, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I'm catching both those layers really nicely, okay? All right, so now you can see that's gonna, that's gonna be caught right here when I do the top stitching. All right, so that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so then I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna put this little foot back on. I'm gonna throw some pins over. Okay, and I'm gonna put this guy back on the little stitch in the ditch foot so I can do some nice top stitching. It's not necessary, but I just like the way that it works. Okay. So I'm actually gonna start at this bottom so that I can catch this. When you're doing all of this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are not sewing your straps. Okay, that's um, unfortunately really easy to do as your straps are so long they'll get in the way. You wanna make sure not to do that, okay? So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna start stitching. I'm actually gonna bump this up to a three stitch length because I'm really just top stitching. I don't need it to hold really nicely. I just want it to kind of hold together. Okay, move that so that I'm pushing the white underneath. You'll see on the top it won't have a problem doing it because we did that under stitching but down here, it wants to kind of fold out just a little. Okay. 
come around here. Do one little stitch. And I'll pivot and do up that side. Okay, if you want to, you can go ahead and press all of this before you come over and do it. You can see I just sort of finger pressed it, and I'm okay with that, but you can do uh, a better press job than that if you want to. Okay. So I'm just making sure that my ties are over here as I come up this side, and that my backing fabric, that line, the, yeah, the lining fabric is really on the back. Okay, so this is all curled under really nicely because of the under stitching. So we don't have to worry about that too much. But you can see it kind of wants to not budge right there because there's a lot of fabric. So just use those ties to sort of make it come around. All right. Sorry, lots of hands in the way there. All right. And I'm going to sew around this nice and smooth. Are we doing okay? Yeah, we're getting? doing great. Uh, Linda mentioned that she really likes the L's that worked really well on the Kimber Bear. Too. Oh, yep. Yep, same idea. You notice anything that I do that I turn inside out, that's what I, I tend to do that because it just works so nicely. So I'm just going to make sure these little guys are all out of my way, not stitching it down. Okay, and I can see there's a lot of thread or a lot of fabric here, so I'm going to make sure it kind of gets a moving. All right, we're gonna come all the way around here to the end, come around that corner. And I'm gonna stitch over where I stitched before, just a couple little stitches, and then I'll do a lock stitch. All right, and then it's stuck. Okay, so now, this is where most of the tutorials that I've seen have stopped, okay? Because what I've got now is a little face mask that I can put on, tie it, um, all that good stuff. But what we found is when we did the face masks I think I made some for us last week and that we realized that if they don't have that nose thing on it, it sticks out really far. So you can see that, so if I put this on, this, come up top, you can see all the gap here. So all of this gappy part here, we wanna keep that down, okay? Because you've, if you've ever used a mask and like you could, it like fogs up your glasses and becomes really annoying, that's what it is, is because you just have the air gap coming up here. So I figured out a way to make a little wire. Um, channel for it. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I'm just going to use the scraps that I have here um, so I don't have to go hunt down more. Okay, so let me see. I'm trying to see. I want to do it at a bias and that'll only give me three inches. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to hunt down other fabric because I really want to do it on the bias. Thank goodness I just have scraps everywhere. Right? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of bias here. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just looking, so there we go, so here's my 45. Okay, so I want it about that on here. So I'm going to keep it right there, cut some, black this off. Okay, I'm gonna press that so it'll be easier to cut instead of arguing with it. Okay, thanks. All right, so now I've got a bias strip. So the reason I wanna do it on the bias is because bias doesn't fray so much um, and it's a little bit stronger. So what I'm doing is a little bit of a heavy half inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a four inch strip again. Okay. So I've got my little four inch strip. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here. So you could do this, I could, like I showed you, I did it out of, let me bring it around. So this one I did out of the jersey and this one I did out of the cuddle, okay? So you, if you have scraps of cuddle, this is a great way of doing it because this is actually like super soft, which is awesome, okay? So anything that you wanna do it out of, it just needs to be something that isn't gonna fray because we're gonna leave the edges raw, all right? So I'm just gonna fold this in half because this is where I want my center to be. And I'm gonna bring this back over here. Okay, so this is the part that will get a little bit um, not as nice looking because it's kind of hard to get it all perfect, but that's okay. We're just trying to get a little wire in here so we'll have better coverage, all right? And that's really what we're trying to do is just get our, um, 
keeping ourselves protected as much as we can. Okay, so I'm just laying this down so it goes right along that edge basically. So I'm gonna come back from the top and I'm gonna go over the top stitching that I did before. And then I'll come back. It's gonna look kind of funky because I have two different kinds of threads in here. Um, so maybe I'll just do it all from the back and then you guys can see it. Okay. So I'm just trying to get this to come along even along here, all right? I found that a half inch works pretty well. I tried to do it smaller than that and um, it didn't work as well because I couldn't get the wire through nicely. And uh, yeah, and it's not as much fun. Okay, so we're gonna take this back over and I'm gonna sew right along this edge. I'm gonna do three edges is what I'm gonna do. Stick the wire in and then I'll close it up, okay? So let's do that and I'm gonna leave that foot on here. I've got my little, um, my edge stitch foot and I'm gonna use that because I want it to be um, fairly even. Let me get that under there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little back stitch right there. Catch it. Make sure it's nice and secure. Okay. And then I'm just going to follow this edge as well as I can. It's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. If we all start judging each other on our face masks, we're in trouble, so let's just be nice about it. All right, here we go. So then I come up to the end here, and I'm just going to pivot, and I'm going to sew that end down, and I'm going to come right back up to the other side. Okay, so this is where you want to make sure that you've caught it. If you haven't, you can go back. Oops, I need to do one more stitch over. And then I'm going to come right back along this edge. Okay. So if you haven't caught both sides of it, go back over and catch it. Make sure that it's all tucked in there neatly. I had to do that on a couple of minutes. Okay. And I might have to right there. It looks like I just came off. Yep. See, I came right off because that, that corner is um, kind of a pain in the rear to do. So it's not a pain, but here, that's going to be the wrong word. Okay. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to try this again. Okay, guys, I'm going to shove it over just a little bit more. All right, there we go. Okay, yep, I caught it that time. All right, so now I'll get that out from under there. Okay, and then what I did, so this is just the picture hanging wire, and this is just stuff we had hanging around the house. Um, but I found that the, um, the bendiness of this was good. So we had a few different wires that we tried and this was the one that I liked the best. Um, if you have something flat, that's better, but um, this worked, okay? So I'm gonna cut it a little bit shy of four inches. So four inches is here, okay? So I've got a little bend in there with my nail and I'm gonna cut it just a little bit before that. Because what I want it to do is to go into, <laughs> It was exciting. Um, so I wanted to go into that little pouch, um, but not past it. So on a couple of them, I put them in there, and then I had to trim them, and it was okay. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit funky because that wire will sometimes want to grab onto your fabric. Okay, so this fits into there, under there just fine. Okay, what I could do if I wanted to get really picky about it is I could, I could go ahead and stitch closer to this, and that will actually hold it nice and fine right up here. Okay, and that would be um, absolutely suitable. I tried zigzagging over it once and that worked okay, but it was also very scary because I was so afraid I was gonna hit it with my needle. Um, so, you know, to each their own, this is a way that I found that works pretty universally okay. All right, so now I feed that under there. So what I'm trying to do is get back over to here to push that over real well. You can see where the bump is for where the, the um, the wire ends, I'm gonna make sure that that doesn't get stitched, okay? All right, so I'm gonna get up there. Back stitch just a little, and then I'll just go forward, do my little stitch, unlock it. There we go, all right. Okay, so now we'll take my threads out. So you can see, not beautiful, but you know what? Effective. So there's that. 
Okay, I'm going to trim off my threads just a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our back. So if, like I said, if you wanted to, you could make a smaller channel. You could probably do that with a zipper foot pretty easily. Um, I found that where, the, where it sits in there is totally fine. Okay, all right. So you want to head back around the other side there and we'll finish up. So I'll try my little mask on, see if it works, you guys. Okay, so we can, so this goes right over the nose. So this will fold down really nicely. Do, 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 do. Okay, so what I found is that it will be loose. So tie it so that it's not super duper tight and then you can go back and fit it. And like I said, if you want to do it with the elastic, you totally can if you're doing it for yourself, okay? So it's totally gonna work. This guy will totally bend up, choo -choo, fit around your nose, fits much better. See, okay, is that good? Could you see it? Yes, try it again. Okay, choo -choo. Hang on, right there, no gaps. No gaps. On the cheeks. Okay, which makes it really effective for what, especially when you're wearing glasses because there's nothing more annoying than your glasses getting fogged up and then you know how much air is actually escaping. We're trying to keep some sort of protective barrier for ourselves. So that's my little tutorial on how to make the masks. Like I said, again, I'll reiterate that it's for a barrier for you. Um, that's the way this one is made. If you want to make them for hospitals or other essential workers, I totally recommend that you do. Please look for a local organization that is gathering those masks. Um, there are lots of them happening, lots of sewing drives happening um, for that. But make sure that you have them for you and your family as well. The pattern that we'll have available has three different sizes in it. So it has a small, like for a child, a teen size, and an adult size. Make sure that they're fitting correctly. Go ahead and um, make the pattern fit however you need to. Trim it down um, to make it fit your loved ones as well. We all need to be protected and um, we're trying to do our best to make sure that you can keep sewing, keep yourself protected, and help others as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can visit our, our blog, okay? So the blog is at shannonfabrics.com slash blog. Is that right, Ellen? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and you can go there. There will be a blog page that has all sorts of information on it about where you can get a hold of the different organizations, the We Need Masks and um, the patterns for the Deaconess and for the Providence one, as well as the eQuilter site and lots of other um, information for you so that you can make masks for yourselves and for others. Thank you so much for joining me. Are there any other questions I need to answer? You're going to uh, put the PDF up. Yes. Okay. Yes, I have to finish. <laughs> I have to finish the PDF pattern for you guys. Sorry, I will get it up this afternoon, um, and we'll have it up on the blog for you to download. We'll also have it here on Facebook that you can download, and we'll have the link here. And um, I'm sure that you can find it probably through our Instagram as well. So um, follow us, and we'll have more tutorials. I'll be back again tomorrow. We're going to do our Sew Together Tuesday. We're going to be working on a strip quilt tomorrow. So if you have always been wanting to make a strip quilt out of cuddle fabric and haven't known how. Here's your time. We'll be there at 10 o'clock uh, Pacific time. We'll be here live on Facebook doing our Sew Together Tuesday. Um, until then, happy sewing. Thanks so much, guys.